Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today we are talking about the latest update from OpenAI and putting it in the context of the larger evolution of the AI space, particularly as it relates to enterprise companies and the decisions they're making about how to implement artificial intelligence models. First, the specific update. OpenAI has now released fine tuning for GPT 3.5 Turbo. Now, fine tuning is basically exactly what it sounds like. It means taking a pre trained model, in this case, GPT 3.5 Turbo, and adjusting the pre trained model's parameters slightly to make it perform better on a specific task. In this instance, the use case that OpenAI is imagining is companies and developers bringing their own data to the table to better customize GPT 3.5 Turbo for their specific needs. The company writes, this update gives developers the ability to customize models that perform better for their use cases and run these custom models at scale. Early tests have shown a fine-tuned version of GPT 3.5 Turbo can match or even outperform base GPT 4 level capabilities on certain narrow tasks. As with all our APIs, data sent in and out of the fine-tuning API is owned by the customer and is not used by OpenAI or any other organization to train other models. Now, we'll come back to that question around privacy and data integrity in just a moment. So what are some of the use cases? The announcement post gives a few. They write, in our private beta, fine-tuning customers have been able to make meaningful improvement model performance across common use cases such as improved steerability, fine-tuning allows businesses to make the model follow instructions better, such as making outputs terse or always responding in a given language. For instance, developers can use fine-tuning to ensure that the model always responds in German when prompted to use that language. A second common use case is reliable output formatting. Fine-tuning improves the model's ability to consistently format responses. A crucial aspect for applications demanding a specific response format, such as code completion or composing API calls. A developer can use fine-tuning to more reliably convert user prompts into high-quality JSON snippets that can be used with their own systems. A third common use case is custom tone. Fine-tuning, they write, is a great way to hone the qualitative feel of the model output, such as its tone, so it better fits the voice of businesses' brands. Now, the other things that OpenAI points out is that fine-tuning can enable businesses to shorten their prompts while having similar performance. This, as we'll see in a moment, becomes really important given the cost. And also, they've increased the number of tokens that fine-tuning with GPT 3.5 Turbo can handle. It's up to 4K tokens, which was double their previous fine-tuned models. OpenAI writes that early testers have reduced prompt size by up to 90% by fine-tuning instructions into the model itself, speeding up each API call and cutting costs. So obviously what this is about, ultimately, is businesses and developers better being able to use this model to get outcomes that are specific to their business and that rely on their specific data. The optimistic view of this is that it's hugely significant and unlocks a huge variety of use cases that weren't available before. NVIDIA's Dr. Jim Fan writes, OpenAI's most significant product update since the App Store, GPT 3.5 Fine-Tuning API. This will be the largest LoRa as a service ever. LoRa in this case stands for Low Rank Adaptation. And as Jim concludes, quote, I'm expecting a barrage of new applications from all walks of life out there. So this is great, right? OpenAI is giving businesses and developers the ability to do more with their tools. It's one of the leading platforms to build on. Seems likely to be a big success, right? Well, there are some concerns. Cambridge AI postdoc Dr. Ahmed Zaidi says, Fine-tuning is essential for broader AI application adoption, but I think OpenAI got this wrong. And Dr. Ahmed then points to two different reasons. The first, he says, is data privacy. He argues no company will feel comfortable uploading their data to fine-tune the model. The second is ROI versus cost. Companies and individuals are paying for training and inference while using their own data seems like a bad deal. All upside for OpenAI, but not necessarily for companies. Now, on this first point, the privacy point, OpenAI's developer relations lead Logan actually responded. He wrote, Many of the world's leading and most sophisticated companies trust OpenAI and use our services. Security and privacy are critical to us. Dr. Ahmed responded, I hear you and I genuinely hope I'm wrong. Building language models for over a decade, what ChatGPT has done for language model street cred is great. However, it does seem we're in a different world now in terms of data and ownership at an enterprise level. Ultimately, the market will tell us if this strategy works or not. And this is, I think, the really interesting thing that this brings up. One of the big business questions in this space is to what extent enterprises and big companies will work with third-party platforms such as OpenAI or whether they'll spin up solutions on their own. To the extent that the pattern of the past holds true, companies will likely try to spin up their own solutions and then ultimately shift over to the winners in the third-party space that the market agrees and decides to trust. 
This is sort of the position of Anton Osika, who writes, Prediction. Fine-tuning is going to be huge. Most companies training their own foundation models right now will regret it, since fine-tuning APIs will become so much better. In the same way that companies that hired tons of deep learning engineers for computer vision models, etc. before they had the data maturity for it, regretted not just waiting for cloud APIs. So basically the argument here is, there's going to be a real temptation for enterprises to spin up their own models using their own resources. This is something we've been following closely, right? The proliferation of advanced open source models has made the calculus around this field just a little bit different. It's had impact on the startup sector, which hasn't necessarily had the uptake from enterprises that they assume they would. And it obviously has big implications for how the industry develops. One of the interesting patterns that sort of reflects this as well is that the big enterprise software providers are increasingly offering models that are something of a hybrid, where instead of just pushing one proprietary model like OpenAI's GPT, they're creating a sandbox or environment in which enterprises can customize any of the various models for their specific needs. This is basically Amazon's approach with Bedrock. And more recently, Microsoft has been giving signals that despite their huge investment in OpenAI, they might be doing something similar, partnering with companies like Databricks to help companies customize their own solutions. The other factor in this is, of course, cost. This is a lot more expensive. That was the second part of Dr. Ahmed's tweet, and that's been a big part of the discussion as well. Wireless Anon writes, GP2 fine-tuning pricing is pretty bad. Might push even more people to open-source models. Now, Logan's response to that was saying, the upside is being able to create a better product experience for your users. Companies invest in this all the time. Fine-tuning is no different. Basically, OpenAI's argument is that even if it's expensive, it's worth it. But of course, companies aren't going to be looking at these prices in a vacuum. They're going to be comparing it to other approaches to the problem, including adapting open source models. Right now, we just don't know. Like I said, I think if patterns hold true, enterprises are likely to try a lot of custom spun up solutions and then shift over to whatever third parties end up being dominant, just because that's the natural pattern of software. Is it possible, however, that the concerns around data privacy in this case are so high that the risk of leaks is too great ultimately for many to choose a third-party service? It does seem possible. Now, one more perhaps related, perhaps unrelated note on the open source front. The information is reporting that Salesforce is leading the financing of Hugging Face at more than a $4 billion valuation. Hugging Face basically helps companies store and use AI software across a huge variety of open source models. The information writes... Hugging Face is on pace to generate more than $30 million in revenue annually. Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, IBM, and others pay Hugging Face for steering its users to their respective cloud computing services. Founded in 2016, Hugging Face also charges developers for an enterprise version of its repository for machine learning models. The startup, which has more than 200 employees, says more than 10,000 companies use its free or paid repositories. It hosts at least several hundred thousand AI models including popular open source large language models such as Meta Platform's Llama 2. The funding by Salesforce suggests it may view Hugging Face as a potential future acquisition. While Salesforce is best known for software used by sales professionals and for the Slack chat app, it also sells an array of services for software developers. Now, while it may seem like some of this stuff is a little bit in the weeds, I actually think that business model conversations have a huge and deterministic impact on how the AI industry is going to evolve. If every enterprise in the world prioritizes privacy to the highest degree and only wants to customize their own models, the AI space is going to look very different than if they all choose to work with third parties like OpenAI. It'll have ramifications on how startups build, what startups build, and ultimately ramifications on the tools we use. But for now, in this stage where it's all about competition and seeing what sticks, it's great to have this new capacity of GPT 3.5 turbo fine tuning available, and I'm excited to see what companies build next with it. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. If you're enjoying, please like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, peace.